So next up, we've had a slight change to the program. Our Jinming is going to present. So we've had a couple of talks on people developing bioconductor packages, and Jinming is going to talk about how he's using them to analyze single cell RNA sequencing data. Just get this set up with things. Yep. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am a PhD student in SMICE lab and the Chen lab at Weihai. Today, I'm going to talk about time course analysis of pseudo-bulk samples from single cell RNA sequencing data. So time course analysis is a special type of differential expression, and, uh, expression analysis. You perform time course analysis uh, we, uh, to perform time course analysis uh, from single cell RNA-seq data, we first need single cell RNA-seq samples. Here, we use um, five samples from mouse memory gland across five key de developmental stages, such as um, the embryonic stage, early postnatal stage, pre-puberty, puberty, and adult. Um, the tunnel plot method uh, is previously used in the published papers to investigate mouse memory gland epithelium cell types and uh, cell lineage commitment age. And we improved this method by using signature gene proportion. The tunnel plots show the major cell types in mouse memory gland epithelium, basal cells, uh, the LP cells, and ML cells. And the cell, uh, according to the tunnel plots, the cell lineage, the cell lineages are not committed at uh, E18.5 days, but segregated at post early post uh, natal five days. At the pre-puberty stage, the cells are well differentiated, and the cell types are not different from uh, puberty stage or um, adult stage. There are some example tunnel plot analysis. Uh, which can be found on my GitHub page on the SC Tenery uh, repository. Next, we analyzed each sample to obtain the epithelial cells using CERAT. And for example, for E18.5 sample, we identified the epithelial cell population as well as some contamination cells such as keratinocytes, Schwann cells, stromal cells. And the cell types were annotated by using known marker genes. For example, we use FCAM for epithelial cells and DCN for uh, stromal cells. We are only interested in the epithelial cells, so we removed all the non epithelial cells for each sample. Uh, besides, uh, doublet is a significant issue in single cell RNA seq data analysis. So we also removed all the potential doublets that were predicted by the doublet prediction software as CDBL finder. After removing all the unwanted cells, we integrated the epithelial cells of the five samples together. The UMAP plot on the left-hand side uh, is colored by five uh, clusters, and the UMAP plots on the right-hand side are colored by five samples. As we have five clusters and five samples, we can combine the samples and clusters together to generate 25 new groups. And then we can aggregate cells in each new group to form a new uh, pseudobulk sample. And in total, we have 25 pseudobulk samples. Uh, as we already had uh, pseudobulk samples, the ne next step is to open pseudotime. 
and to obtain pseudo time, we can perform trajectory analysis. Trajectory analysis is a popular downstream analysis in single cell RNA sequencing data analysis to uh, investigate cell differentiation along pseudo time. And here we use Monocle 3 to perform the trajectory analysis and to order, the, uh, to order cells along the trajectory, we need to choose um, start node uh, manually. And here we chose what node Y125 as a start node. After selecting the start node, we can easily obtain the pseudo time for each cell. Pseudo time is the distance of a cell to the start node. And after we uh, obtain the pseudo time, we can calculate the average pseudo time of all the cells uh, that were used for constructing the pseudo box samples. And, and after we um, calculated the pseudo time, we have both pseudo box samples and pseudo time for each pseudo box sample. And then we can perform uh, the differential expression analysis using HR. In HR, uh, a key step is to fit a uh, log and And we use pseudo time and extra spline terms to generate the design matrix for the log linear model. To generate the design matrix, uh, we first ordered the pseudo time. And then we use a cubic spline to generate a basis matrix. Then we reformed the spline to make the first colon show the linear trend. So the, fir the first colon in the reformed spline is correlated with pseudo time. Finally, we can add an additional intercept that uh, intercept colon to the reformed spline to generate the design matrix. Now we have the design matrix. We can use HR to perform the time course analysis to identify the, the genes along pseudo time. And we use the uh, HR causal likelihood method. So we use the design matrix to fit uh, the log linear model. And then we use the causal likelihood F test method to test the second to the fourth coefficient uh, to identify the D. And finally, we identified about uh, 2,800 genes. As the second uh, coefficient uh, shows the linear trend, we can know which genes are downregulated and which genes are upregulated. And here we show three downregulated genes and uh, three upregulated genes along pseudo time. Another popular way to show the the gene expression is to use heat map. Here we show uh, top 20 up regulated genes and top 20 down regulated genes along pseudo time. And the pseudo box samples in heat map are ordered by pseudo time. And we can see the trend for down regulated genes and for up regulated genes is obvious in the heat map. After we obtained the differentially expressed genes, we can also perform some uh, functional enrichment analysis, such as KEGG analysis. Here we show some top uh, significantly enriched downregulated KEGG pathway along pseudo time. For example, for PI3K AKT signaling pathway, it is uh, significantly downregulated along pseudo time. And this pathway is uh, associated with mouse memory gland development and breast cancer genesis. So the DE genes that we found along uh, pseudo time are meaningful. Uh, and that's all for the uh, time course analysis. And finally, I would like to thank my supervisors, Gordon and Andy for their supervision and great help on this project and uh, mentorship during my PhD study. And I would also like to thank members in Smiles Lab and Chen Lab, and also thank uh, collaborators, Wu Pinda and uh, uh, Vispeda and Lineman Lab for generating the data used for this study. Uh, thank you for your listening, and I'm happy to take any questions.
Thank you, Jin Ming. I'm going to ask everyone to move down the front. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Pete. Thanks, Jim. And a really interesting work. I was just wondering in your design, do you have both the pseudo time and um, your spline in there where the first component is perfectly correlated with the pseudo time? Yeah. So for the reformed spline, the first colon is correlated with uh, pseudo time. So we know, uh, uh, we know uh, using the second coefficient, we can know the, uh, the trend of the genes, so it is highly correlated with pseudo time. So if, if the coefficient is positive, then we can say those genes are upregulated. And if the coefficient is negative, then we can see the gene expression is negatively correlated with uh, pseudo time. Uh, uh, well, I was just wondering whether you've used both the pseudo time and a perfectly correlated variable in the same design, or do you only use one of those? Uh, I. So um, for the pseudo time. So is Z3, uh, 1, 2, and 3 all a part of the design or are no, you only This using... is the design matrix. So we use the last one. Okay, awesome, thanks. Yeah, thank you. And a question online from Dario is that, uh, would you have gotten the same results without doublet removal? The proportion of doublet cells looks relatively small. Um, well, for some of our samples, um, the doublet rate could be about 10%. So we think we should remove that doublet. Uh, if we don't remove the doublet, the um, results might be similar, but, but it's a good idea to remove the, to remove the doublet uh, to uh, reduce the, um, the biases. All right, thank you very much, Jin Ming. Please join me in thanking Jin Ming for his talk. Thank you.